All right. Welcome, everyone. As we give everyone a few minutes to dial in, we'll go ahead and take care of some housekeeping items. Um, thank you for joining us today on this beautiful Tuesday. Uh, we're going to be talking about streamlining your event registration processes post-COVID, amid-COVID. I know we're all trying to figure it out in the nonprofit industry, so we are so thankful to have Edgar here with us today. Um, a few quick housekeeping items for you. Yes, today's webinar will be recorded and you will get the slides afterwards. So, you know, definitely take notes, but you don't need to be frantic about it. Uh, you, we'll send it to you so you can always reference it back. Um, we're also here for you. So if you have questions, please drop them in the chat in real time. Edgar will be happy to answer them for you. Um, we're really here for you. So definitely, definitely let us know what your questions are. Um, there's also lots of free resources available on our website at achievecauses.com backslash resources. We have podcasts, free downloads, blogs, um, all kinds of things for you. And it's all free. So if you need help with your fundraising efforts, check it out. Um, we also do free webinars once a month on various topics to help you with your goals at your organization to further your mission. Uh, so in a few weeks, definitely join us for multi-channel fundraising campaign advice uh, from Abby Jarvis. And then also in the spring, we've got um, Todd, who's going to talk to us about uh, reading financial statements. That's a really good one to invite your board to as well, um, if they're not as well versed in that. So always check back for, for free webinars for different topics. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to Edgar. Thank you, Erica. Thank you very much. Uh, also to the Achieve team, thank you for having us here, giving us this opportunity um, to discuss this uh, topic that is uh, still around us, uh, COVID, but the world is moving on, right? Uh, we're optimizing uh, how we do things in this new environment. Uh, technology is a big part of that, getting together. It's still something that we want to do, so I'm hoping that you get a few uh, ideas out of uh, today's conversation. Um, and I will be presenting, you know, uh, a couple topics, uh, but I would also like you um, to come up uh, with any questions and, and let me know uh, if I can help you address. Um, before I, I move forward, just letting you know, RichPAC, uh, it's an online registration and payment management software. Right. We've seen definitely uh, uh, we've been on the front lines, seeing a lot of the changes over the last year. We've had a lot of conversations with clients, new uh, clients, partners of ours, and what's been going on, not just in the registration, the event space, uh, but also the payment world as well. Um, one that I'm sure we all, we all face uh, when we deal with these uh, events uh, online, hybrid, or in person. Um, so Richback um, is definitely somebody uh, that if we can ever be a service, let us know. But let's move on to the topic of why we're here, right? Streamlining your event registrations. Um, so today we're gonna cover a couple of things uh, that I'm hoping um, can assist you in the planning, right? How to successfully build a registration flow to accommodate virtual and hybrid events, right? Um, making things easy, making things robust uh, in this world of ever-changing technology, right? We're exposed to so much technology. Let's find a way to make those onboarding experience easy. Those tools that are important in ex executing uh, these events, right? So that you are prepared in setting them up, being prepared in managing them both during and past the event as well. And then ways to communicate effectively. We wanna make sure that you know of some of the tools that are out there, whether it be manual, automatic, it's not easy to do what you do on a, on a daily uh, basis. Let's make sure to make things efficient. And then what's changed, right? What's been going on uh, since 2020? that you can leverage um, to save money, to save time, especially if you're a nonprofit, right? You wanna make those dollars uh, stretch as much as you can. You wanna be able to focus on your mission uh, and what you, you know, would like to do as a big picture. So let's make sure you understand how you can leverage those tools. So what's changed uh, in the industry, right? Uh, there's been a lot of changes this last year, but in the- oh, Did questions? you wanna share your screen by the way, Edgar? Oh, uh, let's make sure we do that. I was excited. Uh, so let's share this one. So I think you should all see my screen now. Stream on your event registration. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, we did go over the topics that we're going to cover. They were on the agenda. So I won't spend much time on this but definitely um, our little roadmap for, for today. Okay. All right, so changes in the industry, right? So uh, 
acceptance of online events, hybrid is here to stay. Okay, and, and that's one thing I wanted to make clear. Uh, I was just at a conference uh, last week uh, in Scottsdale. It was the first conference that I had uh, attended uh, in person in over a year and a half. So I was really excited to be around people, to be able to talk about what we do, to learn about what's going on. Uh, and I was like, oh, this is going to be an all online event. And to my surprise, that was actually a hybrid uh, event uh, where uh, some of the panel discussions, some of the keynote speakers, were there, but they also zoo, had others zoom in from across the globe, somebody as far as um, Australia, New York. Uh, we had somebody from Chicago zoom in as well. And I was, I was listening, I was like, wow, this is gonna be the norm, not just to be able to come in here and to learn from the people around me, but to be able to also learn from others, right, who can't quite make it. And it's, uh, it makes it for a very uh, much rich and robust. So definitely walk away knowing it's going to uh, change. The registration and payment tools, right, um, have also evolved, especially on the payment side, right? People are becoming more transactional online. Credit card companies are being more risk averse, right, about uh, online events and possible cancellation of them. So these are things that as you're exploring solutions, um, not only uh, are, are they more flexible, right, in the scalability of them, but um, there's also been some changes that you want to make sure um, you're aware about. Powerful streaming options allow scalability. I mean, what, five years ago, seven years ago, Zoom was not even a word or commonly known. Now here we are, right, uh, from around the world. Uh, being able to partake, you know, with not just, you know, a small group, but thousands, tens of thousands of, in, of individuals in one place learning from each other. So this is something that will just continue evolving the worldwide audience. Lower operating costs, right? Uh, as technology improves, uh, it becomes wider, broad, broader uh, used and adopted, right? It will and it has uh, lower cost in some uh, cases. So let's make sure that you are shopping around, maximizing your dollars spent so that you can lower your operating costs and invest more into your organization, invest more into what you're doing. A lot of changes here. Uh, and this gives you opportunity to do more, right? Have smaller events online, um, not just during the COVID period, right? First time I use that word, but let's uh, acknowledge that, but also past uh, this era, right? Uh, being able to leverage your technology, right? And uh, possibly um, adopt those, those changes in the industry. Now, one of the things that I talk to my clients about when they come uh, to me um, is, why are you here, right? What's the purpose of your event? What are you trying to accomplish? And this is something that you all should think about um, as you're starting to plan an event. Um, and there's usually um, a couple of buckets that I see people in. They're coming from an organization or a purpose of, I just wanna provide a good service, right? I wanna slow it down, I want to expose, I want to draw people in, but you know, I wanna provide a service. Um, and you can adopt and find technology that serves that purpose. Then on the other spectrum, right, I want to make money. I want to grow my revenue. I want to make a profit off this event, off what I'm doing. Uh, and the big focus is a lot more transactional, right? Getting people through the door, accepting their payments as soon as possible, being able to deliver that service as quickly as possible. So definitely understand your purpose. And there's a hybrid option. Why not both? I want to be able to provide a service and have an amazing experience for my attendees, but I also want to create, um, a, you know, a, a, a profit uh, off this event. Uh, so there is the option to do both, right? But part of what you are learning today and the changes in this year is like, what do I want to do going forward? And know that um, there's no exactly, you know, right um, answer. Now, as you plan your events, right? You want to think about your strategy and your budget and your purpose, right? And understand uh, what an event strategy is and why it's important. Now, before I forget to um, say this, every single one of my slides has an image. Every single image, once you click on it, would take you to an additional resource on this subject. So I won't be able to cover everything here today, but definitely something to uh, 
walk away with that there are additional resources that our teams have provided uh, to the world and you can click on that but understanding what an event strategy is and why it's important that's going to be something that you need to uh, make sure you're planning uh, through and that way you can start thinking about how to have an, an awesome event the pinpoint the target audience event. Who are you working with, right? Uh, who is uh, your expected audience for these events, for the attendees that are coming through or that you're trying to bring on to your organization? So that should be part of your strategy and also can help derive that budget. Develop your event goals and KPIs, right? What would be the expected result? You know, if I were to scale between a one to 10 and I want everybody to do a 10, what are your goals to get people there, right? What are your key performing indexes, right? That will allow you to reach that 10. Choose the right type of event. We talked about it, this being going, people now going to online again or on site again. People still doing online like we are doing right now or the hybrid model, right? There's obviously different resources that will be needed in all three situations, uh, but also, um, something that um, you need to account for as you're creating your budget, right? Some are more or less expensive. I know the event I went last week was not on the uh, lower end side, uh, but definitely uh, something that I think everyone walked out with a 10, feeling like they earn right a lot out of it. Um, and this is something to strategize and budget for. And then review your budget, right? You should have a budget, right? How much can I spend on technology? How much can I spend on speakers? How much can I spend on my marketing material and the resources to bring people to my event, the resources to keep people engaged during my event so that they would be uh, somebody who can attend my future events as well. So making sure that you are creating a strategy and a budget, right? Just like managing a household, right? You don't just walk through your house with your family, you know, living it. You just try to plan your week try to minimize those uh, risky situations, and that way you can account for as much as you can. As uh, we move forward, uh, we mentioned knowing your audience, right? Who are those uh, people that you are targeting, right? And there's a lot of detail in knowing your audience. Demographic, of, of course, is uh, one of them. Is it an event for young people? We have a, a client, for example, where they have a conference um, for high schoolers, uh, it's a religious conference. So it's like the group leader bringing the uh, young kids right into the event, it's about 2000 attendees per event. Uh, so that market, right, that uh, marketing effort is a little bit different, right, than for example, you having a fundraiser with uh, a much different de 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 demographic. Also knowing, you know, the industry that you're trying to serve, right? Is it an industry where, you are trying to um, educate people. Is there a service where you're trying to have fun, right? We have a lot of events that we help out where it's just people getting together, having a good time, right? And you're building, right, uh, the material, the content around all of that. So definitely something to make sure you're uh, aware about. Location, right? As we're talking about, is it going to be online? Is it going to be hybrid? Uh, it's going to be on site, right? Making sure that you're aware of your platform, whether that's your venue, uh, whether that's your environment for online or the combination of, right? And location isn't just, you know, where is the event taking place, right? But also the time zones, right? Where if you are having an event and it's hybrid, right? And um, it's going to be in a certain time zone, then you need to account for those people. So for those East Coasters out there trying to have events at nine in the morning and you're making a high rate, I here in California may make it uh, difficult, make it a little difficult for me to show up at 6 a.m. Somewhat of a morning person. So location, definitely knowing your audience and uh, that allows you to plan and grow your audience as well. Is it individuals or is it group attendees, right? Uh, knowing your audience is uh, part of that registration. Who's signing up, right? Do I wanna create a process where people are signing up themselves? or like my last example, I'm bringing 20 people, right? That's a much different registration experience, much different uh, experience that you wanna provide them after they register and how you engage with each one of those people under the group. So definitely something that um, comes up a lot when I deal with organizations, right? Especially managing groups, 
how you can not just get them onboarded, collect their funds. So keep that in mind, right, as you're creating these experiences. The technology background of your attendees, right? If you're going to have um, just an online event and you have not just uh, the keynote speaker that they got to log into, but you have breakout sessions or collaborative environments, right? Or now you need an app, now you need various links, now you need, you know, a little savviness to be able to navigate through your event, right? That may not be something that you would um, expect everybody to know, right? How to manage the technology. Uh, so definitely be aware about that. Uh, the easier, the better, okay? Uh, in my experience, and this is something that I help clients with, creating an easy experience so they don't have to think about it, right? They just kind of flow through the process and enjoy it, right? Because registration is sometimes not easy. Going through an experience of an LM event can be a little convoluted. I hope everybody had a good time joining this event, right? With a click of a button, but they're not always like that, right? So know your audience as you're planning uh, these hybrids, these especially online, online events. Means to travel, right? If you are giving people the option to travel, um, where is the location? Um, I've gone to some events where you fly in, you gotta, you gotta drive two hours to the event. That makes it a little hard for some people, especially if they don't have the means uh, to travel. And this is why hybrid and online has been um, a growing industry in this last year. Your uh, means of travel is minuscule, right? You just got to make some time. You got to jump into the computer. If uh, you don't have to show up in the camera like me today, you can just be in your pajamas, uh, but you get more eyeballs, right? This is something that uh, we've seen uh, grow uh, in our event managing clients, which is, hey, they have a lot more people uh, that they can bring to the table, a lot more people that they can now have engaged with the organization past that event. So definitely um, something to consider. Uh, hybrid is not going anywhere, right? Even if you are having that on-site event and you want people to get together, right? Uh, you're missing out on a large segment of the population, right? If you're not given the option, obviously, if it's uh, possible, um, for those to partake who don't have those, those means. Social media engagement, right? Uh, like I said earlier, how technology savvy are, are they? Because this should be part of your strategy, your marketing strategy to be able to engage people. Um, I know the team here at Achieve does a great job at this, but this is something that every organization should be doing, right? Engaging with people on social media, publicizing their events, publicizing their speakers, right? Connecting with them post uh, the event. Um, because again, they are your pipeline for future events, future opportunities. That's something to consider, whether you're trying to provide a service, going back to my first slide, or you're trying to make revenue, right? These individuals should be engaged with you. And right now, whether we want to or not, social media is a big aspect of um, how people engage in the online world. And it should be something to consider and think through as you plan plan your goals. As we move forward, uh, we're gonna be talking a little bit about a registration software and how to choose virtual event software and some things to consider, right? But I will be the first one to acknowledge that it is a journey uh, to acquire technology, uh, to make decisions within an organization. So that's why I thought this slide was very appropriate. Uh, not only do I sell software and sell ways of doing business, right, for events, but I'm also a buyer of technology uh, as well within my business. So this is something um, that I understand is a journey and take your time, right? As you're going through this, it's not a race unless your event's next week, which I hope it's not, uh, but definitely uh, do your due diligence. There's many researchers out there for you to be able to do that. Um, a couple of resources that, for example, are like G2 Crowd, uh, Captera, ways to find a lot of options in one place, review them as well, and even request free demos. But as we transition into registration software, right? Uh, you think about what you need in a registration software. You got to get people in the door, whether it's online or it's hybrid or on site. Uh, it needs to align with your goals, right? It needs to align with your budgeting um, uh, 
budget. And uh, that way you can uh, always go back to delivering on the reasons why you're having those events uh, and making it very successful for everybody. Uh, and this simplifies your process, right? You wanna create a uh, software or purchase software that creates solutions for you, doesn't cause problems, by it, right? Especially on the online mode, the scalability factor that I'll talk a lot about, making sure that you have registration software, payment software that will be able to take care of your volume, right? This is uh, an opportunity that you all have uh, in doing hybrid events to get more people on your screen to get more people engaged with you, but you gotta make it simple, right? Because more people means more problems. So the registration software should not be one that causes you those problems. Customizable, right? Your events could be all the same. It could be different. It can be used for attendees. It can be used for vendors, for speakers, for sponsors, right? You wanna be able to find a solution that will customize to your process. And that's actually the vision that we had for RegPack from the beginning. Right, creating a solution that you don't adopt right as is, is you adopt, you, you buy a solution and you um, customize it and find ways to make it adopt for your organization, right? So there are a ton of options besides Richback you can consider, right? But it should be something that aligns with your goals. It's simple, but also customizable. You know, you may have uh, an event where you gotta have them go through 50 steps. You may also have another event where it should be five steps, right? So your solution should be able to give you those options. Payment collection, right? You're not seeing these people. You can't collect their money over the screen. So just make sure that it is something that you can do. Collect payments online, uh, collect payments even internationally, right? If you have international audience and eyeballs. So making sure that that is native to your solution, your accountant will love you for that as well. Uh, and of course it gets you paid faster. We'll talk about that more in the next slide. What else is part of the registration software? Intelligent logic, right? Making sure that you having are having it adapt to your environment, making sure that people, you know, are going through it as needed, right? If you're only attending one day uh, event uh, and there's three days, then making sure that we're exposing that person to all the options for that one, making sure that you're creating workflows, right, based on those situations, right, to allow you to spend more time in your organization, more things in what you like to do, and also an environment that your team can collectively, you know, gather around, right? This isn't, you know, people registering and that goes into somebody's inbox. It should be a cloud software, something that can be accessed from anywhere at the event itself, online in your home, right? Being able to communicate, run reporting whenever you want. So these are things you should expect from your registration software, right? That I know um, most can provide. Mobile registration, right? Phone these days, everybody does things on the phone, mostly. Uh, that has been a huge uptick in how business has been done, especially here at Richback, where people are registering and paying on their phone, right? So it can't be convoluted. It needs to be uh, an option and an easy option. The registration experience, right? As you consider how people should register, right? This is something that we are awesome at, making sure that people can register on your website, right? So, or should they be directed to an external environment? That's that's up to you, but you should definitely be considering that, uh, your SEO presence, your branding, how you want to happen. Um, login, no login. This comes up a lot, right? I just want people to give me their information and pay, that's it. Oh, we have a very long registration process for our event. I don't want to have, you know, to make changes for themselves or, you know, update their card on file, let them be able to do that. So let's make sure that you create an experience tailored to your event, which you can have many events and you can have various experience for each one, right? But these are things you have to think things through, right? Especially if you have a high volume, let people do those things themselves, those changes, those um, updates without getting you involved. Data, right? What do you need uh, from these individuals? It just may be their name and thank you, you're done, right? You're gonna attend the event tomorrow at 10. Uh, it can be a lot more data, right? A lot more information that you have. I attended an event where they asked each um, participant like a list of, 12 or 15 different questions, right? And they were gonna use that data that was captured during registration to build out the actual attendee experience, right? So you should have an experience um, as you register that uh, will be uh, valuable, right? Not just to the attendee, but also to the one who is managing the event because not only are you getting them into the door, 
where you can use this information later on to plan your future events. Orders, right? What are you offering when you're doing a registration experience? Should it be free? So maybe there are no orders. Or you can have, you know, multiple days, multiple sessions, multiple add-ons, excursions, right? Discounts. This should be something that you account for so that when somebody comes to you to partake in what you're having to offer in your event, uh, they are displayed those options. It helps you make sure they adopt those options, increasing that revenue, making sure that you are budgeting right um, for those uh, options or the lack of right in case there's capacity. So making sure that you provide them those options to maximize um, those uh, uh, opportunities you have to convert them to, for example, a paying client. So a couple examples I mentioned, single ticket, multiple days, workshops, breakout sessions, right, that you should account for as a possible registration experience. Uh, talked about add-ons already, merchandise, discounts. Be surprised how sometimes those can be a little convoluted. Early bird discounts, right? Multi-session discounts. These are problems that people come through that they either don't have solutions for or are trying to automate, are bogging them down in their day-to-day. -day. So let's make sure you adopt the technology or an experience, right, that can help you. Um, and not all events are the same, right? Like I said earlier, so you may not need some of these things, but when the situation arises, right, uh, these are things that will make your life a lot easier as an event manager uh, when the time comes. Waivers or consent forms. Uh, you'd be surprised how many cancellations happened. Maybe not uh, this last year, right? Some got refunds, some did not, right? So uh, a, a big protection uh, for your organization is to have in the experience you know, a refund policy, uh, if you're recording, if you're going to be taking pictures, if you're going to have, you know, proprietary content, let's make sure that as part of the registration experience, you are collecting these signatures online so that you as an organization are being protected, right? It's not just a registration experience for the attendees, but things that you need to account for later on, right, as you're managing your organization, your nonprofit. Anything else, right? Um, going back to the customizational part, after submissions, your vendors will need to purchase booths, purchase sponsorship, right? This is part of what you can create as your registration experience, even if it's virtual, right? We've attended our virtual events ourselves where we still are a part of a sponsor. We sponsor a specific session. We sponsor a specific topic uh, on there. So these are things that you should account for as your registration experience, no matter if it's hybrid, right or not, these will stick around right post-COVID. Post Collecting online payments, right? I won't spend too much time on here, but I do want to emphasize the importance of online payments because money is a sticky situation. Nobody likes to bill collect afterwards, and it is important, right, to collect payments if you are charging for your events uh, so that you can pay your vendors, you know, pay your staff, pay those speakers. So it gets your money faster. It's better for your clients, right, to be able to whip that card out and get that payment done on the screen. Um, I had an event that happened um, where before COVID, all their checks were still coming in the mail, right? They would register schools, the school would send teachers, the school would send, you know, a check in, and they were getting, you know, uh, <laughs> countless checks throughout the year that they now needed to do. And they're like, we don't want to have to deal with that anymore. We don't know that, what that checks has been. Right. So being able to um, provide those online options, being able to provide options on how they can pay credit, debit, ACH. I mentioned earlier, international payments for your attendees international should be part of what you do. Um, I already mentioned this once, but I deal with a lot of accountants and being able to make their life easier will make your life easier. Right. So we talk about in a relationship, happy wife, happy life. Well, in business, happy accountant happy job, right? Happy life. So let's make sure that we make it easy for people to pay, but also internally streamlining, not just the accounting for payments received, but refunds, right? Managing situation when it comes to change it, managing where the fees are going, where the funds are being collected, what it's paying for, right? These are things that should be part of your goals, right? So that you don't have to worry about them later on. And then of course, to help prevent fraud, there's a lot of you know, um, security when it comes to credit card, uh, when it comes to um, technology, right? How your provider should be able to provide a secure environment, not just for payment, but for storage or cards and files uh, on there. So these are things that the industry has evolved a lot in this last year 
online payments, the risk aspect of that, right? Uh, so let's make sure that you do have that. If it is an option to collect payments, um, thinking that throughout your goals. Receiving payments 24-7, who doesn't want to collect payments 24-7 if they can, right? One thing I love about Richback is that we're always open. Right? Our clients are always open for business, not just to register, right, but to collect payments as well so that you can be doing what you want to do throughout the day, throughout the you know, um, world, and uh, your business is always running when it comes to registration payment, getting people into your door so that you can execute that event hybrid online or or in person okay and then less manual work connecting registration and payments let's make sure that you understand that you are a busy person so let's minimize right the work that you're spending on collecting payments so some technology tools for hybrid events right as you're thinking about what to um acquire for technology, right? Uh, you have some team and project management tools that you can create. I know internal or they can use, I know internally we use Asana, right? As our task management system within Regpack so that we can create tasks, we can do uh, different uh, projects uh, on there and everybody's in the same place. Event registration management, right? Uh, Regpack is here today, but there's a ton out there that you should explore, right, uh, as, as you're managing your, your event. Video streaming platform, right? Right now we're using Zoom. I'll mention a few other ones later on. But even if it's an on-site event, right, uh, giving the option, especially during certain segments of your event, to stream that audience, to allow others to partake, right, to get your speakers to um, attend from offline, uh, this is going to be something to consider. And there's a ton of options out there. I'll talk about a few in a minute. Event marketing, right? We're here today with Achieve uh, putting on this event, and that's what they're really good at. But these are things that you should be considering and you should adopt, right? Whether it's a pay-per-click advertising, some type of newsletter, right? Or more robust website, right? You want to get people in the door, so you should be acquiring tools that are working for you 24-7, Event marketing is one of those. Um, how are you going to collect information afterwards? How do you know if you did a good job or not? How do you know how to change for the future, right? This is something that was used pre-COVID, but it has expanded, right? Uh, since then, which is using technology to acquire feedback, especially when you're not seeing them in person, you're not seeing those smiles, you're not you know, you know, asking them to give you a thumbs up or down, let's make sure that you're gathering that data and you don't need technology to be able to do that. Lead retrieval. This is something that you should always be creating a pipeline of future uh, uh, attendees, uh, future in, in individuals, right? So every single person who signs up for an event is now a lead, lead for marketing your services or your nonprofit, lead for uh, getting them to the next event or for adopting something with your organizations. Let's make sure that you have some type of technology that you're using, uh, right, to manage this, this, this audience. Okay, and an IT team. I hope you don't need an IT team, but if you have a large scale event, right, where you're doing hybrid on site online, uh, I mean, there's gotta be somebody, even if it's one person you call your IT team or a large group that you can depend on, right, to make things run smoothly, right? Today, it's just us and a group of people directly, but when you're running a, a, an event where it's three days, there's, like I said earlier, huge speakers, breakout rooms, right? Different forums on there. There's gotta be a quarterback who is gonna be managing the situation. It can be one of you right here on this call, or it can be an actual IT team. So this is where I mentioned earlier, think about your goals. What are you trying to accomplish? How big, how many people, right? So you can formulate um, and, and, uh, ideas around what tools you, you need. Now, video streaming options, we've heard of a lot of them, but I would be doing the service if I didn't point out some, some right, that are free, that cost, right, if you're having a, a larger option. Uh, I know internally we use sometimes Zoom. Google Meet is what I use for my demo. It's very simple. Send a calendar invite, click a button. I can meet with like up to 50 people at the time for free. If you want a more interactive, right, uh, environment, and this is where you'll want to do something like Cisco WebEx, uh, on 24, but there are a lot of options that you should be looking into and some that even integrate right with your platform, right? As you are having an online event, people are signing up, uh, whether it's integrating directly there or being able to download, right, those attendees, you can upload 
that list of attendees to your streaming options. Let's make sure that you're considering how to do this and get familiar with them, right? As we talk about hybrid events, this is going to be something that's going to be um, a tool that does not go away. Communication with attendees. Again, every single one of these uh, little images, cool little images, uh, leads you to a resource right around um, that, this topic. Uh, but it's definitely an important aspect to a successful event. You are all here listening to me because you found out about this event in one shape uh, or form. So it is a very important aspect to a successful event, especially when you can't see people. Okay, You can't go talk to somebody, right? You are... Um, expecting to be in the know, right? So it is something that you have to do, communicate with your attendees and not forget about that email. We get a lot of emails throughout the day, but it is a very important tool that is, um, has not lost its importance, right? I know when I uh, send out emails or newsletters, um, I try to make them impactful where it's full of knowledge. So you can always pull it up and reference it, right? Uh, search for it in your inbox, uh, communicate what's going on. Uh, and, and, and it's a jumping point, right, to, to the next topic, to the next place. Uh, so it is something that you want to do. Your registration service should have an email component on there. There's a lot of marketing tools out there as well um, for email communication. This should be part of your strategy, should be part of your tool. Content marketing, right, be able to get people excited. Give them ideas of what they're going to see or do, um, make them aware, right, uh, of what, what to expect, especially if there's speakers coming through or the topic so that they can come not just with an open mind, but with the ideas that they can bring to themselves with questions that um, they want addressed. So build anticipation to your event, right, which makes it for a more fruitful event. Uh, notifications, right, if you do have app with your uh, software, which is something that you can have as part of your software or as a third party, but being able to alert people of what's going on, start times, um, feedback, things like that. This is something that uh, is now very normal as we all have smartphones, communication through notification. And then social media, I talked about that earlier, right, as a big part, right, of people's world right now, whether they like it or not, uh, but making sure that there is a forum, not just during the event, but after the event, where they can learn more about you, engage with the other attendees, right, and stay in the know, right? When it comes to an event, you're trying to share information, you're trying to get people together, right? So that's a good platform to, to continue that. As we go uh, into profitability, right, if you are in the business of wanting to stay in the black, uh, wanting to exercise those, you know, fundraising nonprofit dollars or, you know, just making money, right? Uh, let's make sure that you are exposing your attendees, especially during registration, to all the options that are in front of them. I know in RegPack, it is something that we're always trying to understand, right? Uh, what are you trying to offer people? What options are there available? Who should see what options, right? Let's make sure we're presenting them in a very clear, clear way so people can adopt them, right? And that's more money in your bank. Um, when we talk about profitability, it's not just selling things, but it's how to manage, right, your expenses, right? So one thing I get asked a lot, especially for nonprofits, is, hey, can I pass on the fees, the credit card fees to my attendees? That's an option, right, that is out there, right? You don't have a lot to spend, um, or even if you do, right, this may be something that you would want to do. Uh, so that's another way, right, to make um, a few extra points of margin, especially if your margins aren't very high. So know that there's another way to do that. Purchase protection. This was uh, a big one this last year. People had to cancel because they were sick. Oop, I got to ask for a refund. The uh, event organizer now has to give those money back. Right, uh, as opposed to there being something that they can leverage, like a checkout, they bought purchase protection, the organizer keeps that money for that attendee, the attendee still gets their money back, right? So these are just tools that you can adopt for your online hybrid or um, on-site event to make sure that you're profitable, right? Because having to issue a refund to 100 people, that can make or break, right? Um, your budget, right? So uh, another way to increase profit, donations. I know this is a topic for today, um, and 
it can be part of your process when people sign up for your event, if you're creating that experience, right, when they onboard to your event, or it can be a whole separate process, right, not just to ask for donations, um, have them contribute to a campaign, have them be able to do a reoccurring donations, right, I'm a big listener of NPR, I donate $20 a month, and I don't think about it, because they just take it out of my bank, every single time. So if you are in the mission, right, of helping people, and it is something that you want to have uh, as an option, right, um, this is a big part of you becoming profitable, because now you can do more with those funds, now you can plan more, especially if your uh, event is free, right, where you don't have to pay to attend this webinar, you don't have to pay, right, to learn about us and be part of our environment. But if you would like to make a donation, right, that can make a huge difference to how you make decisions in the future. So this is something that, that should be available registration software, or if you want to adopt a different technology, right, and, and should be part of your goals. So we want to accept donations, how, where, and when. One time recurring post the event. Um, old attendees, don't forget about those, right? If you are using a technology uh, and you are creating a bucket of attendees or people in the past that ha have, have attended, um, they're probably going to be your best customers, especially if your event was um, was was successful. Uh, and by customer, I mean somebody who can come back and continue engaging with you, right? Whether it's a uh, service or a, a profitable event that you're trying to run, right? Being able to reach out, being able to communicate with those individuals, be able to prospect to them to attend your future events, right? Uh, we want to make sure that you are aware that they are right uh, a good pipeline for your future events and um, I wish you a lot of success and those people who you work with in the, in, the, in the past will help you with with that success. Abandoned checkouts right this is uh, sometimes people struggle with this uh, it's like I don't know that they ever wanted to attend my event I don't know that they you know ever you know considered me as an option uh, so one thing that we kind of make people aware about is, hey, um, are you trying to grow those attendee numbers? Do you know that somebody, you know, registered but didn't pay? Uh, do you know where they got hung up on in the registration process? Because there are opportunities, right, that you can now go back and leverage, right, to try to convert into an actual attendee. Uh, whether it's a paid event or not a paid event, you want people here. So let's make sure that you have a process, right, to identify who abandoned the checkout ride, uh, the confirmation uh, of I want to attend, and that way you can leverage uh, those individuals and convert them into attendees. And whether that's a hybrid online ride, um, this is going to be something that will help you go from 200 attendees to 250 or even more. Attendee reviews, right? Um, feedback. We talked about this earlier, survey tools, but you want to make sure that you always optimize how you're doing things. We're here to learn about ideas for online registration, how to manage your events post COVID, uh, but your attendees will be uh, a great asset, right? In getting that feedback, adopting that feedback so that you are always changing for the better, right? Or knowing where you need to make some cuts uh, and you know, not spend your time. So let's make sure that is part of your process. Your tool should have some way for you to be able to get this, this type of information. Increasing your event attendees. So understand why your audience wants to attend in the first place, right? Going back to our goals. Why are they here, right? What are they looking to accomplish? Offer incentives for early registration or arrivals, right? Early bird, right? Oh, you get something, you know, um, extra for attending or for purchasing earlier, right? Uh, so those are things that will incentivize things. I was in a board meeting last night for my uh, softball association, the girls softball, and we were going to um, raise the fees for uh, this next season, but then we introduced an early bird fee and staggering it where if you come in early, right, uh, or, or, or purchase your um, season early, you'll get an extra clinic or two as part of your registration so that you don't have to go pay somewhere else. Incentivize people to sign up early, right? And that way you're creating um, a, a good number of, of attendees, right? But also allows you to plan, right? And know who's coming, who's going to be there. Incentives is a great way. Uh, joint event discovery sites, right? Making sure that you are publicizing yourself in various forums, making sure that you have eyeballs into what you are presenting. So that is something that you always want to keep as your marketing strategy. And then keeping them excited, right? Making sure that you are promoting yourself 
that you are sharing content, right? That you're sharing teasers of what they're going to expect, right? They want to look forward to flying and meeting you, you know, in Florida or to jumping on to that Zoom call at 11 a.m., right? Let's make sure they're excited. And encouraging sharing of your event, right? We talked about social media. We talked about um, getting, you know, uh, the word out there. So this is something that uh, your attendees should be the one that uh, are communicating, you know, your, your mission, right? Your, your, your event, uh, no matter the format, uh, and, and will help you increase your numbers. And then leverage the power of video, right? So this is something that we've been using a lot in RegPack, right? Which is, hey, you learn about what we have to do. Would it be nice if we create a video now that we know how you're looking to adopt our solution so that you can share with your team, right? But it's not just communicating a product, it's communicating your mission, communicating what you are trying to accomplish, right? Going back to keeping people excited. Video is a really good format and there's a lot of free options now these days that you can leverage for making that happen. And then connecting speakers with attendees, right? I'm learning from people. I know I connected with some speakers last week, awesome people. I wanna keep engaging with them. I wanna learn, you know, not just from that moment, but over time what they're doing, because I am interested in what they're doing. Uh, and, you know, this is a great way for, to also retain people to get them to the next event, creating that excitement. Sponsorship revenue, right? You wanna, you know, have good ideas. Um, ideas sometimes cost money uh, to implement and, you know, you can't do it all yourself. So whether it's, um, it's going to be online or hybrid. It's a very important aspect, right, to have a sponsor. Thank you for the sponsor, Chief, today, uh, again, for having us here. But um, know your worth and what you have to offer, right, as you are going to these sponsors and trying to get them to become a sponsor of your event. It can be the event itself. It can be a speaker specifically or a topic, right? Uh, and there are various sponsorship techniques, right? Straight for branding, you know, having your logo on there, uh, sponsors of the engagement, right? Or like I said earlier, uh, some type of uh, activity that you have or freebies, right? Especially if you're going to have an onset of event, you know, uh, being able to share right to the world uh, that they exist, that they are a good option, right? Helping each other out, right? This shouldn't be just you creating a budget out of you and what you have, but these should be other people, right? That will help you with this mission, especially if your mission is awesome. So let's make sure that you are thinking about that, right? And there's a, a lot of people, a lot of organizations, a lot of businesses who are willing to sponsor just to put themselves out there. Almost there, but uh, I wanna, go ahead and uh, start winding down in acknowledging that I cover a lot of information, a lot of things you have to consider, and it's not easy to do what you do. I've been doing this for a very long time, working with organizations, understanding, trying to understand their problems, trying to understand their goals, their mission, and it's work. Managing an event, managing thousands of attendees, processes, technologies, tools, it's not easy. So let's acknowledge that, okay? Let's acknowledge that and let's make sure that what you're doing uh, now isn't just in a vacuum, that you're creating processes that can be passed on to future leaders, right? And I see that a lot in the event industry. You know, people don't do this for a life, right? They don't do this for a ton of time. They usually pass it on. They move on to do different things, right? So don't let your organization spin wheels by having to reinvent processes, uh, as people leave or you transition, right, locations, events, venues, to create those processes, evolve your relationships, right, that you can leverage for future events. That's a no-brainer. People forget about that, right? When it comes to events, it's you working with people, you working with organizations, you creating relationships, right? That's what I love about attending events and putting these things on, right? You get to learn people, you get to see people, you see them next time, you right? uh, you create those bonds, um, and then accept that this is um, it's stressful sometimes, and the managing uh, events is stressful, and to take it one day at a time, and of course to plan early. I think the most stressful situations are what I mentioned earlier. I have an event next week. Uh, can you guys help me get up and running? <laughs> You should probably plan this a little bit longer because I don't want you to miss out, right, on things that will be good for your audience. So accept that it's stressful. Take some time. Be a visionary, right, and give yourself that opportunity um, to realize that vision. And then execute self-care, right, making sure you're taking care of yourself because you are 
uh, a person that people are relying on, juggling a lot of pieces, but if you're not taking care of yourself, right, no matter the forum, right, no matter your goals, right, this is not going to be easy on, on you. So always looking out for people is what I try to do, uh, providing them solutions, technology. Uh, so I hope that was a lot of information that can be used uh, later on. Um, I'm happy to address any questions you have about the industry, registration, or payment world uh, on there. But like I said, there are uh, all these images, uh, research that you can look into right after this call to assist you in, in what you do. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Edgar. Uh, lots of great advice here. Uh, we'll hang out for a few minutes. So if anyone has questions, definitely drop, drop them in the chat. I'm sure Edgar will be happy to answer them for you. Um, and then in the meantime, Edgar, I was just curious, um, a lot of our clients, you know, they're, they're shifting their event times. They were going to do them this year. Now they're pushing them out to spring. Um, what advice would you give a nonprofit that's, you know, sort of scrambling to keep up with COVID and, and shift their event processes right now? Yeah, I think uh, the first thing is to communicate right to your attendees what's going on. Um, we're in the situation ourselves where we sign up with some events and they've had to roll it over now like three times. But uh, them being on top of that communication allows us right to understand where we are and how to plan our side, uh, especially the money part, right? We paid into this event. What are you going to do with our money? You know, are we going to get it back? Are you going to roll it over? Right. That's a tough, tough, tough subject uh, on there. Um, but if you are planning to have the event in the future, making sure that you're communicating, that you're letting them know what the process will be for that next event, rolling it over or, or, or whatnot. Um, and uh, give yourself you know, plenty of time to do this, because uh, like I said earlier, there are uh, small events or really large events right so if you can do things in bulk right especially that communication it'll minimize right how much time you have to spend on those nuanced situations awesome that's great advice um and one other question for you as well um oh uh bev is asking how do we connect with edgar his contact <laughs> info please <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty simple. I work at RegPax, uh, RegPax.com, and my name is Edgar. So Edgar at RegPax.com. Um, and I have a whole team behind me that helps me manage RegPack. Uh, if I haven't said it before, you know, I'm one of the founders uh, of RegPack, one of the partners here. But um, as I said earlier, I love to engage with people. So um, I'm happy to take any questions that you have from today to explore options, right, for managing your technology. One of the biggest things that um, I was talking to somebody earlier about is, you know, what's changed in this last year besides what I mentioned is people are trying to do more with what they have, right, with the tools uh, and, and their budget, especially since they're not always there. Uh, and, and I love talking to people about that. What are you doing right now? What are you trying to accomplish? And if I can't help you with what, you know, I have, I can usually point people in the right direction with my knowledge, right, that I've seen. Um, because there's a lot of great tools out there that um, can, can be leveraged. But yeah, edgar at richpacks.com, or uh, if you ever want to do a demo, just go to our website, richpacks.com, click request a, a free demo. You'll talk to one of my colleagues, right? And um, we have a mission to first understand, right, why that person is here right, uh, before you even talk about what we do. And then we can transition into, yep, we can help you or not, this is not for you, right? So that um, we can make sure we use uh, that time, time, time wisely. So thank you for asking that. Oh. Yeah, thanks, Edgar. Um, another question, what would your recommendations be to a nonprofit that has a smaller budget? Um, what should they really be looking for in their registration software? Yeah, so, um, We'll definitely want to uh, learn, right, uh, how the event is, is happening, right? Um, is it free? Is there going to be, um, um, you know, payments involved? What, who is your audience, right? How many events do you have, right? Understand the scope of, of that event uh, because there may be, you know, if it's just, you know, a couple people signing up, there may be some free options that you can leverage. Uh, if you uh, have a much larger need, then there's going to be some technology and some process that you have to create to manage those audience, right? So for a nonprofit, right, um, it's always understanding um, their mission, right, their goals, understanding the budget that they have, right? Um, that's a pretty 
loose word, it can be $100, it can be $5,000 right there, uh, and that way you can maximize your ROI. Uh, so make sure that if you're talking to anybody, right, about that event, that you're sharing your goals with them, right? And that way um, they can uh, align, right, what you're trying to accomplish for your event uh, with your goals, right? Um, and there are, like I said, a lot of options out there, not just Rich Pack. So just make sure that you're asking the right questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Edgar. We really appreciate your time. Uh, looks like we're, we're all out of questions. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up and we'll send out uh, this link with the recording to everyone so they can reference back. Thank you, everybody. Best of luck out there in this post-COVID world with your events. Uh, and let me know if I can ever be of service. Take care. Wonderful. Thank you.